think are the most important skills in being a field hockey player? Um, for me, it, it's a real mixture of skills. I think it's really difficult to pinpoint just one that's really vital in being a top level player. Mm -hmm. You know, you have everything from your fitness level to your technical ability, such as how you can actually move with the ball, your passing skills, um, to everything from that to your flexibility and your recovery and your nutrition. It is encompassed all within that, all these areas. It makes it so important that the now we all talk about having a well-rounded player and someone who really puts emphasis on all these areas. Do you have a role model that inspired you to do hockey? Yes. I mean, I've had a number as I've, as I've grown up. You know, I think when you start out, if your first coach is always a real role model. You kind of want to emulate them. Uh, a person I really look up to, or two people I really look up to, one is my, my current coach, Graham Moody. Mm -hmm. um, he went to the Athens Olympics and uh, he actually is... The way he thinks about the game is so incredible and his, his outlook towards it, you know, he's very, very inspiring. He's someone that I look up to and if I have a good game and if he says I, I play well, that really means a lot to me. Um, so I look up to him. And then also a teammate of mine, someone who's, who I've played with since I was 15, a man called Stephen Dick, who went to the Beijing Olympics. Uh, just to play with him on the pitch, he, he's got this ability of making you look good from some of the stuff he does and his movement and some of his skills. And he gives you the ball in such areas. Uh, so there's two people that I look up to and learn from all the time. I think that's one of the keys to the succeeding in top level sports. You're always learning. You know, you've never really, you've never mastered anything. You're never perfect, and you've always got to think about how you can develop and how you can improve. And there are two people that I think have that attitude, and it's great to watch. Um, do you remember what happened and what you felt like on your um, first Scottish trip? Do I do? It was in 2013. Um, it was against Wales. Uh, it was at Peffer Mill in Edinburgh, and. Uh, I remember finding out on the Monday, the game was on the Sunday, I found out on the Monday that I was going to play and for all of that week I was so excited. I didn't really know what I was going to feel on the day. Um, I turned up in the morning, I had a really good breakfast, good meal the night before and I felt great and then we sat in the team talk and I just started to shake. I felt genuinely like I was going to fall over. Um, I really don't know what it was. I mean, I think back now and I think it was probably the proudest day of my life. Uh, I went out to warm up something which normally you take for granted. And I remember doing a lunge and actually feeling like I was going to fall over. Uh, and jogging through, I just couldn't move. I felt my legs were jelly, my arms weren't working properly. I just, I had no idea what was happening. I was so worried that that would take me into the game. Um, and then I remember getting onto my, the stick and ball part of the warm up and starting to loosen up. My first pass missed my partner by about 10 meters. It was awful and I thought, oh no, it's going to be the worst day. Um, but then I remember standing in the middle of the pitch and singing the anthem and for some reason at that point I just felt really calm. I think you go to rugby matches and football matches and you sing the national anthem and the team's standing there and it's always a really special moment but I think until I did that in front of a crowd and with everyone else it just makes you feel so calm. You feel like everyone is behind you and you've got the support of everyone uh, and at that point I just really relaxed really relaxed and then enjoyed the game. Yeah, I was lucky that, that Graham, the man I was talking about in my last question, was stood beside me mm -hmm. um, and he obviously was my coach so he kept me quite calm and, and spoke to me throughout but uh, you know, it was a very, very surreal experience. I've never been quite so nervous in my life mm -hmm. um, but I was glad to get it over and then the, a funnier story on, on my second cap, uh, it was against England, so they're the fourth best team in the world so they're incredible to play against. Yeah. Uh, I was actually reserved for the game. It was a Thursday morning, just in the build-up to the Commonwealth Games in Glasgow, mm -hmm. um, and I was actually sat at my house. The game was starting at 11 o'clock, and at that point it was 9.10. I sat at my computer just eating my breakfast, because I was doing some work, uh, and I got a phone call saying, someone's injured, can you get here an hour? Bearing in mind I was in Edinburgh, and the game was in Glasgow. Mm -hmm. I've never changed so quickly, got my kit on, jumped in the car, and drove quite quickly through to Glasgow and the whole time I completely hadn't forgot it's amazing what play at this level does I hadn't really thought about what was about to happen I hadn't really thought about the fact that I was playing England I hadn't really thought about the fact that I was playing an international game uh, and I remember getting onto the pitch and warming up and feeling fine and then everything and then sang the anthem thought, oh my word about to play against England so it was such a it was so funny having those contrasting emotions I think thinking about it in the build up in my first cap was was so scary and then not having the chance to think about it against England it's just amazing how the mind works so that's my, my first two caps lucky to have got four and hopefully more to come okay thank you